we're really excited to have both of these artists here. James McSwain is the um, subject of our Canadian Artist Spotlight this year, which is a project that Images does every year to recognize um, the work of uh, an artist working in film and video in Canada. Steve Reinke is uh, a video artist who no longer calls Toronto his home and is based in Chicago. There's two people that need to have a talk, and it's these two guys. Well, I'll begin. <laughs> <laughs> at the, uh, the Spotlight um, exhibition that was held at the Workman Arts on uh, April Fool's Day. There were six works that were in that program. The first one was called Amherst, which is sort of a kind of biographical documentary about my growing up in a small town in Nova Scotia called Amherst. And, um, in, and also growing up gay and, and how that was both negative and positive in many ways. Then the other five works that followed were um, animation, because I'm known for my animation. Uh, before that, I had done you know, a lot of work in puppetry and theater, and so I kind of transferred uh, a lot of that uh, sort of theatricality and uh, narrative uh, with the, you know my own voiceover uh, to those animations. When I first uh, started working at the Atlantic Filmmakers Co-op and Distribution, down the hall was an animation studio uh, called Doomsday Studios. I decided to take up the idea of Doomsday in a certain sense. I made two works with the Doomsday Studios. One was called Atomic Dragons, and then the other one is called Flower, which is basically taking the whole concept of the flower, exploring it uh, with many kinds of concepts, uh, having to deal with aggression and war, and then ending up with the, the idea of, um, of uh, transformation to peace and uh, tranquility. Then there was uh, the uh, Nova Scotia Tourist Industries, which is a sort of animation about uh, um, somebody trying to write a brochure for the tourist industry, trying to lure people to come to Nova Scotia to commit suicide. And so, <laughs> so it's very humorous, black humor, but you know, humorous in a lot of ways. The last one was, um, uh, the, the latest uh, uh, animation that I've made called uh, The Fountain of Youth, which is about two older people uh, in a, you know, old age institution of some sort in which they sort of have these hallucinations and dreams of finding the fountain of youth. For many years I've been using footage that I got when I was a grad student at uh, NASCAD and uh, footage of Joseph Boyce giving his lecture there in 1976 where he made um, the blackboard, the first of his blackboards. Yes, I used that footage in a few earlier videos. Two or three of the components of the 100 videos used the footage. I decided to kind of use it in a more essayistic, definitive, archival way. So it's like a two-channel installation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On the floor is a monitor which simply plays mm -hmm. the almost two-hour lecture. And then there's a kind of a wall-sized projection which takes yeah. an eight-minute condensation of the lecture. Tonight is a um, 62-minute piece, uh, uh, The Tiny Ventriloquist, which is um, uh, kind of part two of Final Thoughts. So I'm, I'm doing a kind of larger project um, that will be finished the kind of the moment I die, where I just keep adding things. Mm -hmm. And the book, of course, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. which collects writings of various <laughs> kinds. The book comes from um, we can say it comes from kind of the legacy of Gene Randolph's pictocriticism in Toronto. Things like psychoanalysis and synchronized swimming and, and the work Jean uh, uh, was doing back then in Toronto, where she would write mm -hmm. about artist's work with a sense uh, that the activity of writing about work was parallel to the work itself. Each of the mm -hmm. pieces, however different they are in the, in the Shimmering Beast, all are kind of based on uh, an existing text or artwork. We were talking about this before, but how uh, he, how the way that he talks about uh, to the students at that time about the artwork. There's a lot of talk about how we've come to the end of history and we've fallen off. You know, the the sort of kind of uh, uh, the global sort of idea of what history means. He didn't believe that. He did not believe that we were at the end of history. He thought that we were all embedded in history and that that was that, and there was a reality of history that we all have to deal with all the time. So then I thought, well, that's exactly what you do in your work, your um, you know, concept of the self, 
is always embedded in some sort of kind of historical or what would you say, even geographical sort of location. Is that true? <laughs> well, it's both true and not true. I mean, in the one sense, it is really uh, specific in details about yeah. time and place. None of it is um, uh, autobiographical or confessional. The self that I use is not an actual, uh, not a stable self. It's like a, a uh -huh. convention. Well, well thanks. <laughs>